Okay, let's learn about the hematocrit. This is a determination of what percent red blood cells are in a blood sample. Hematocrit can also be called packed cell volume. It's referring to after centrifugation, which I'll show you here in a little bit. When you collect blood, a lot of times you do it by venipuncture. That means you use a needle, put it into a blood vessel, and draw out a blood sample. So now I want to show you a tube of blood before and after centrifugation. So the image on the left shows what a blood sample looks like before it's handled at all as, as far as centrifugation. Centrifugation then is where you put the blood sample into some instrument called a centrifuge and you spin it for so many minutes at so many G's and we'll get into that perhaps later but right now we know that the right image shows the separation. Red blood cells, urethrocytes, are denser than anything so they go to the bottom of the tube. Then we have this layer called white blood cells and platelets oftentimes called the buffy coat, buffy layer. And then plasma is on top, and we're going to find out it's plasma if we had an anticoagulant in the tube. So now I want to show you this image that actually compares side by side three different blood samples. This would be from different animals, or maybe the same animal, but at different times. The leftmost image talks about a normal blood sample. Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets are here, remember, and then it says plasma. Well, the blood sample volume total never changes, but when you undergo centrifugation, the red blood cells, like we learned, fall to the bottom, or forced to the bottom. In our case, normal packed cell volume is going to be 45%. In anemic conditions, you have less red blood cells, but the sample volume never changes. You say you collected, let's say, 10 cc's or 5 cc's, whatever it was. That can't change even in an anemic animal. And then the far right picture shows polycythemia, which means many cells in the blood, and hematocrit is higher than normal, would be higher, quite a bit higher than our normal. You can see that. Also, an animal that's dehydrated would have this very same image, polycythemia. Packed cell volume is increased in dehydration. So this is just a quick image to show you the whole process. Blood is collected, uh, pricking somebody's finger here in a small tube. Then it undergoes centrifugation. And then you get a hematocrit reading. And a and B here refer to two different individuals. Individual A is very close to 50%. Individual B is more like our convention, 45%. And finally, I want to show you uh, where these numbers occur in real life. Uh, this happens to be from a blood panel. I can enlarge this a little bit and show you that this is from a dog, Australian Shepherd, two years old, and it's a female. Even the sex of an animal uh, can vary the hematocrit. Now you can see this, I won't go through this very much, but you can see where there's different values, blood values. I want to go to the bottom and show you the hematocrit. And so here we are right there. And hematocrit is often abbreviated on these uh, readouts as HCT. The result for this dog is 44.7. Look how close that is to our convention of 45%. The reference range indicates what's the normal range for dogs, 37 to 55% here. Uh, there are no flags because this value falls within the normal range. If it was high, the flag here would read capital H. If it was low, it'd be capital or capital L, sorry. And then this is a visual way to say this value of 44.7.
is in the normal range between 37% and 55%.